Hey everyone, it's Mana here, and we are back with some more Everlasting Summer. And yes, I am starting to feel better. My head still hurts, but we're making we're making some progress. I sighed and put my head down on my hands, hoping my torments would be over for today. Someone patted me on the shoulder. I looked up and saw Shurik and Electronic, who sat next to me. What do you want? I asked tiredly. Don't be sad. Is there anything better to do? Look, we've been discussing the possibilities for the advancements of the Cybernetics Club with Olga Dmitrievana. And there's a problem. We need more guys. If you could... He hesitated. Advancement and those guys are incompatible with each other. I said nothing and started to look over the pioneers around me instead. Well, I don't have time. Can't you see that I'm always busy with the camp leader's errands? Yeah, I guess you're right. It, it's kind of embarrassing how it all went today with Yolana. I looked at him with surprise. It seems that Shirk blames himself for that cake accident. Yeah, it is. All the pioneers seem to be here, but I couldn't spot Slavia anywhere. I think she's angry with me. Who? I asked absently. Yelana. Maybe I should apologize. No, it's not your fault. Yeah, it's not his fault that she acts like a freaking child. We sat silently for a while, and then I stood up and said, My legs are numb. I better take a walk. They made no reply. I made a few circles around our improvised camp, noticing the close looks of the camp leader following me. Looks like Olga Dmitrievana couldn't wait to come up with some kind of new task for me. I haven't found Slavia anywhere. Maybe I should go and try to find her. On the other hand, I felt sorry for Yelana every time I recalled her upset face. Maybe this hike isn't the most entertaining thing ever, but sitting there all alone isn't any better either. But at the same time, I didn't want to go anywhere. Well, Yelana's all the way back at the camp. I'd rather go talk to Slavia. Anyway, I was absolutely sure that Slavia was all right, so I decided to stay. I guess that's enough for me today. Really? Did it just ignore my frickin' decision again? Seriously? What is the point of giving me decisions if you're going to frickin' ignore it? Why? It's dumb. Don't give me a decision if there is no decision. I sat in my previous place and waited for the end of the hike patiently almost physically able to feel the looks of the camp leader aimed at me. At last she stood up and declared, And now let's play cities, whatever the hell that is. I had nothing against the game itself. I have something against this game, if you can't tell. But it was obvious that the hike will take longer because of it. Pioneer sat around the fire. I noticed Lena and Alyssa, who took their places on a, a trunk opposite me. It seems that everything is all right. And just a few minutes ago, I thought the opposite while looking at their quarrel. But anything is possible. I'd really like to know what they were talking about, but it's impossible now, and I could feel tiredness growing in me more and more. My mind was completely blank. I wish mine was, because then I'd understand this game. To be precise, my head was so heavy that there was no place in, in it for ideas to unfold. While in my better times, my brain appeared to be wide, a wide highway with millions of thoughts running by, chasing one another and causing major crashes, now it was more like a footpath lost in the woods, which is used rarely and only in exceptional cases. Slavia didn't come back. Hmm, maybe we should have gone and looked like her, looked for her like I said to. But no, we're just going to sit here on this log. This log, it's a great log. But once again, there's no way to find out now. Okay, let's start. Moscow. Pioneer started to name cities. Finally, it was my turn. I tried to listen closely to catch the first letter of the city I'll have to use. 
Okay. I, um, Arkhangelsk? I don't know. We played several rounds. Each new city name made it harder to remember everything that was mentioned before. My attention was dissipating, and I was already lost in all these capitals, megalopolises, villages, and urban settlements. Simon! Simon, it's your turn. Olga Dimitrovana brought me back to reality. Oh, excuse me. What was the last one? You're daydreaming again. No, I'm falling asleep. It was Sevastopol. Okay, then I'll say London. Already used. Well then, it got me thinking. There were tons of cities in the world starting with L, but it was hard to remember even one of them now. Liverpool! Already there. Los Angeles? Ah, finally. She gave me a scornful look, but the game went on. I could hardly bear to think of another city starting with L, but fortunately, it was the last round. Okay, that's enough for today. It's already late. Time to go back. I sighed with relief. On our way back, we walked as we liked without joining in pairs. Night descended upon a camp. A perfectly regular and normal night. It was one of those nights when dark skies, stars, and even a crescent moon don't cause any special feelings, and the chirping of crickets and the songs of the night birds seem more like routine work noises than a nocturnal chorus. In a few minutes, all the pioneers were lining up in the square. It was quite late already, and fatigue took its toll, so our lineup wasn't perfectly aligned. It looked to me more like a line of Vikings after a successful battle where the warriors are happy and smiling, anticipating their return to their families, rather than thinking about maintaining something. I don't feel like going back. But someone else could possibly see a completely defeated troop, or a bunch of survivors who have to march to their homeland with the last of their strength. Thanks, everyone! And now go to sleep. It's late already, as we've established. Pioneers quickly, quickly each ran. Oops, well, I guess I'm not reading it. My brain couldn't comprehend it anyway. And we should go too. We went in complete silence to Olga Dmitrievana's cabin. Okay, let's sleep. She said, turning off the light. Okay. I was tossing and turning for quite a while, recalling all the events of the day. On the one hand, I was overcome with fatigue. On the other hand, that plant for some reason. I don't know why, but it suddenly just appeared in my vision, and I thought it was a face outside that freaking window. On the other hand, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd forgotten something, done something wrong, said something wrong. Well, let's see, Slavia's still missing and this feeling of incompleteness was tormenting me. It was about 2 a.m. All bad things would end sooner or later, or at least would take a break. No, that's not how they work. I fell asleep. Good for you. Oh, that's it? Oh, we're on day six, finally. Please tell me this is only a week long. I'm going to call it there. I know I haven't been recording long, but I don't feel like starting another day already. And, yeah. Stuff. I'm logging off now. I'll see you guys later. Bye.